Creyentes y no creyentes, estamos de acuerdo en que la tierra es una herencia común cuyos frutos deben beneficiar a todos. Sin embargo, ¿qué pasa en el mundo donde vivimos? La relación entre la pobreza y la fragilidad del planeta requiere otro modo de ejercer la economía y el progreso concibiendo un nuevo estilo de vida. Porque necesitamos una conversión que nos una a todos. Liberarnos de la esclavitud del consumismo. Y este mes te hago una petición especial que cuidemos de la creación recibida como un don que hay que cultivar y proteger para las generaciones futuras. Cuidar la casa común. God created heaven and earth, trees and grass, land and water, all the animals, and he created people in his own image. He did all this out of love. Nature, part of his plan for everything. A part of God's creation. He has a plan for me. God made a world of beauty. A world of order too. in all creation, you embrace with your attendance all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may love as brothers and sisters, harming no one. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray in our struggles of justice, love and mercy. Amen. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass on this, the 22nd of the Sundays in the ordinary time of the year. We welcome those who are at home, those gathered a little few with, with us to help us in the celebration. We welcome those who are far away. We welcome those whose only chance of celebrating Eucharist with us is through these transmissions. 
We thank God for our technicians. We thank God for one another. We thank God for the creation in which we live because this weekend and the coming of next week, the 1st of February, 1st of September rather, is the beginning of spring. And the Holy Father Pope Francis asked us to think very carefully and to pray especially for the care of creation. Yes, the world is upside down sometimes <clears throat> and maybe we're part of it. We ask the Lord to help us to stand straight before him. During Holy Mass we remember the happy repose of the souls of May Smith, Father Willie Hennessy, Nellie Prout, Geraldine Nihil, Fred Lynch, Patrick O'Brien and Manuel Pereira and the birthday blessings for Luca Phyllis and Ricardo Phyllis and the special intentions of Betty Slattery and in thanksgiving for Mary and Nam Ho. That's a lot of intentions but they're human beings, they're part of creation and we pray for them as well. So we enter into this celebration together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, let's acknowledge our sins. Maybe our sins against one another, our sins against the creation that God has given us to live in, the sins against ourselves, and all of these turning our back on the good Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and lead us with our sins forgiven to everlasting life. <coughs> give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the world in which we live, for the people of the world. We pray also for our own intentions. And in the silence before this prayer, we lift them all up to the good Lord. And so we gather all our prayers and intentions together as we pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe 
what you have nurtured. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I cry out. I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To you, Lord. At that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance to me, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit anyone if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what shall a man or woman give in return for their lives? For the Son of Man has come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and when he comes, he will repay everyone for what they have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the Lord, dear people of God, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has asked us to pray for creation, to take time and to talk to God about what he has made and perhaps what we are making of it. But I'd like to bring, begin this morning by just calling to mind three things, two films on the life of a young priest. 35 years ago in 1985, there was a British film which I watched, was tremendously attracted by it, called The Emerald Forest. It hit the big screen in so many ways. It spoke about what was going on in the Brazilian rainforest, but also indicated a double destruction. 
What one group of people were doing in the forest was logging. But what was happening to another group of people was their destruction as an indigenous group of people who lived in that forest. Strange as it may seem, the following year, another British film hit the big screen. And that was The Mission, the story of a Jesuit miss missionary in South America trying to do something about the plight of the indigenous South American people who were living on the border between Argentina, Paraguay and Brazil over 200 years ago. But they were also being destroyed. And this Jesuit missionary and his companions tried to halt this destruction because this group of people were caught in the vice between the territorial designs of the Spaniards and the Portuguese and those who would settle and take over their land. The third one is the story of one, someone I know. Every time I hear Enrico Morricone's Gabriel's oboe, I think of a friend of mine who was a fellow student with me for four years, who'd been a missionary in Brazil and after his ordination in 1969, returned to Brazil into the region of Mato Grosso. His name, Rudy Lunkenbein, a young man my own age who decided to give his life. He had been there years before that as a young student, then came back to Germany to study for the priesthood. Within a year of, of, of his priesthood ordination, he went back to Brazil, to Mato Grosso, and there became the superior of a mission. They'd been given land by the Brazilian government years before, and they set about trying to turn that land into an agricultural project for the indigenous Bororo people of the area. And they were succeeding. But it so happened that that particular part of Brazil was being recolonized. And people were moving out from the maritime states into the, in, in, in the, in, into the hinterland and there trouble broke out because these colonists, as they call them, claim the land as theirs. And in the course of their claiming, my friend Rudy, Rudy was shot dead, together with a young Bororo called Simao Bororo. To this day, nothing has happened about their deaths. But one thing is certain, that Rudy, my friend, his cause for beatification and canonization of a martyr is in progress. You see, he had tried to do something about the rights of the Bororo people and their neighbours, the Chivantes. And I remember Rudy telling me in the course of our four years of study together that when he was there earlier on, the local people had decided to die out. The women couldn't refuse the men their necessary pleasures in marriage. So the women took the herbs that would make them infertile so that no more children would be born amongst them. Rudy was only a priest for five or six years after his ordination. But it took him most of that time to be able to baptize the first infant amongst the people. That's what was going on. There was a death, a death wish over those people. Why should we live anymore? Our life, our environment, our everything is being destroyed. What was happening in South America is still happening today but it's happening in many other parts of our world. Our creation and the 
climax of creation ourselves are being done to death. A group of German theologians and ecologists, what you want to call them, reflecting on Rudi Lunkenbein's life and death, they came up with this amazing statement that an ecology has got to be first and foremost holiness. We've got to replace our understanding of the world in which we live by a much holier understanding of it. If we go back to the beginning in those marvellous accounts, beautiful po poetic accounts of Genesis, when God saw what he made, he saw it was good. I often wonder what God would say now. Our psalm today speaks very eloquently. My soul is thirsting, O Lord my God, like a dry, weary land without water. Water restrictions in our country. But during my travels in this country, I was shocked one occasion when I never experienced to see a totally dry dam in the Eastern Cape. No water in it. Something the people have built in order to provide them with life for their crops and for their cattle and for themselves was dry. That's what's going on in this country. That's what's happening to people. The very source of life is being drained away. And that's happening all over the world. And it's happening in so many different ways. When we think of the coronavirus, we think of the tremendous efforts of governments throughout the world and of people with them to try and bring about some sort of healing, some sort of hope. And that epidemic has been with us for a short time. But the epidemic of the death of our planet, our home, and the destruction of it has been with us for a long time. And the way things are going, it may be longer or shorter, we don't know. Our Gospel today speaks very eloquently into this desire of our Holy Father for us to go back and Listen again to what he said in that wonderful letter. It was his second letter to the churches and to the world, based in its title on the vision of Francis, Francis of Assisi. Laudato si. May you be praised, O Creator, for what you do. And Pope Francis says, please, go and have a look. Because in it he's saying to the whole world, can't you see? Look around you. And what he lists in that are things that have been happening for years. But he also tries to offer suggestions as to how we can change that and bring about not the death and destruction of a world in our way and in our time, but to open ourselves to the plan of God, namely, that there should be salvation and that our world would be transformed, not destroyed. Transformed into the fullness of the world that he wants to give us, the fullness of his kingdom. So the words of Jesus to Peter are very apt. We may be shocked when we hear P Jesus saying to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Wow. <laughs> we wouldn't call anybody Satan, would we? But Jesus called Peter Satan. And with a good reason. Because Peter was shocked the whole idea that this marvellous man Jesus should ever die, and worse still, die as a criminal on a cross. That can't happen to you. God forbid. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Because the way you're thinking is people's ways, not God's ways. You're a hindrance to me. In that very word hindrance, we get an understanding of what Jesus was telling Peter when he said, get behind me, Satan. You see, Satan is the prime evil tempter. He tries to sabotage everything that God wants to do, particularly his plan of salvation. And so right from the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, he tempted him. He tried to get in the way of Jesus fulfilling the plan of his father, which would include his death on the cross. 
Satan was hindering. He was a hindrance to what God was planning in Jesus. So that's why Jesus called Peter Satan. You're a hindrance to me. You're in the way. Your thinking is not my thinking or God's thinking. It's human thinking. So it wasn't so bad after all, was it? It was very straightforward and very much to the truth. And in that second part of our gospel, Jesus asks every single one of us to take up a cross. Now we might think that's the type of cross that Jesus died on, a great big wooden lump on our shoulders. Maybe so. But maybe it's the troubles and dis disasters in our own life. Maybe so. But when we think of the ecology of the world, we think of creation, we've got to take that upon ourselves because that's on a cross. And he's asking us to take that on our cross. That if we want life, we've got to offer life. So we find on the plastic bags in some of our supermarkets, reduce, recycle, reuse. That might be the cross. It's difficult to reuse something or to find a use for it when we've never done it before. It's difficult to recycle something when we just throw it in the bin. It's difficult to reduce on what we bring into our lives when we actually don't need them. It's very easy to drop them into the bin and we know they'll be picked up on the Monday or whatever day of the week the bin people come. That's our way of doing it, isn't it? And we do that with people. The great politicians of this world, the great leaders of industry, yes, they are concerned. They're concerned in their way. But maybe they're a hindrance. Maybe they're thinking in their ways and not God's way. Because the ecology of humanness, of you and me, is also going into the trash can. And Jesus says, we've got to lift one another out of that and carry one another, because that might be the biggest cross of all. See, Jesus said to Nicodemus, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. I've come that you may have it and have life to the full. That's God's plan, not the wasting and destruction of us, of our neighbours and of the world in which we live. So the Pope says, yes, some of these things can only be got rid of by prayer and fasting. Let's at least do the praying. And maybe the fasting will take another shape altogether. Nothing to do with our starvation, but yet something to do with saving the lives of people. Let us stand now and we profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By self-denial, we take up the cross each day, walking in the footsteps of our Master. Let us pray for others and so cast off the selfishness which keeps us apart from God. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Paul, and all bishops who carry the cross of pastoral care and responsibility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. <clears throat> For leaders in government and industry who use greed and power to dominate, that they may have a change of heart and instead act out of compassion for those entrusted to their oversight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each and every one of us that will be th thoughtfully and generously thinking of the less fortunate and helping them in a Christ-like spirit of self-denial and self-sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those who are sick and weighed down by physical disabilities, that God may sustain them and their caregivers, and so help them bear their cross with dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord's providential care to save our world from the ravages of global warming and climate change, and so ensure for one and all a safe environment and secure future. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our country, particularly in the wake of disastrous and terrible things that have happened not so very far away from us. We pray that we may be spared the destruction of life on all sides of us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pause now and pray for our own particular and special intentions. We pray too for one another and for the world in which we live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who we've been asked to pray for during this Holy Mass, those who have died, those celebrating birthdays with special intentions and thanksgiving, we pray for them too as we pray for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, receive the prayers of a pilgrim people seeking to discover your will by walking in the footsteps of your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, so that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself so that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Bosco and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Booty and Duncan, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So we pray now the way our Lord and Saviour taught us. We pray for ourselves, we pray for our world, we pray for the hungry, we pray for the poor, we pray for those who don't care, we pray for all who do care. So we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that sustained by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So we break the bread, that others may have bread to break. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to 
everlasting life. Amen. How great is the goodness of the Lord that he, that he keeps for those who fear him. Our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Thank you.